This time I'll do the history of the messaging application WhatsApp. Everybody knows what this application involves nowadays. But for the people who don't know, WhatsApp is a messaging application for mobile devices, also for the WhatsApp web if you are connected with your phone. It is one of the most used applications in the history. In the history you see the development of the messaging application and who invented the application, but to make sense of all this we need to travel back in time. On February 24, 1976, a man named Jan Kohn was born in Kyiv, Ukraine. Jan Kohn grew up in a small village near Kyiv, Ukraine. His family faced financial struggles, and Kohn himself experienced the challenges of living in a country under Soviet rule. In 1992, at the age of 16, Kohn and his mother immigrated to the United States to escape economic hardships and seek a better life. Kohn's passion for programming led him to pursue computer science. Despite facing financial difficulties, he became adept at coding and eventually attended San Jose State University. Kohn's career took a significant turn when he joined Yahoo in the late 1990s. It was at Yahoo that he met Brian Acton, with whom he would later co-found WhatsApp. Kohn worked as an infrastructure engineer at Yahoo and gained valuable experience in the tech industry. Before we continue the story, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell to be updated in our every uploads. It's 2009, the iPhone came out a couple of years ago, and the world is getting to grips with this new concept of smartphone apps. Facebook is rapidly gaining momentum and a guy named Brian Acton applies for a job there, he gets turned down. Brian Acton was born on February 17, 1972, in Michigan, USA. He earned a computer science degree from Stanford University in 1994. Acton's early career included positions at several tech companies, including Apple and Yahoo. He worked at Yahoo for more than a decade, where he crossed paths with Jan Combe, his future WhatsApp co-founder. In January 2009, WhatsApp was born founded by Jan Combe and Brian Acton. Both were former employees of Yahoo. The idea behind WhatsApp was to create a simple, user-friendly messaging app that could be used across different mobile platforms. WhatsApp quickly gained popularity for its simple and efficient messaging platform, allowing users to send text messages, images, videos, and voice messages over the internet. One of the key features of WhatsApp was its commitment to user privacy, with end-to-end -end encryption implemented to secure users' communications. The app quickly gained traction for its user-friendly interface and its commitment to user privacy. WhatsApp was officially launched in the App Store for iPhones in January 2009. Subsequent releases for other platforms, including Android, BlackBerry, and Windows Phone, quickly followed. In October of 2009, Brian contacted several old Yahoo body and got together at $250,000 in seed funding this this earned blind the title of co-founder and since then there was no stopping to this tech phenomena. WhatsApp it was initially designed as a way for people to update their status but once they introduced private messaging, the app started to gain popularity very quickly because at the time traditional texting was still quite expensive whereas WhatsApp was offering global instant messaging completely free. WhatsApp's user base grew steadily, and by 2011, it had become one of the most popular cross-platform messaging apps globally. Its success was attributed to its simplicity, absence of advertisements, and cost-effectiveness compared to traditional SMS. By April 2013, WhatsApp reached 200 million monthly active users, highlighting its rapid and widespread adoption. In February 2014, Facebook announced its acquisition of WhatsApp for $19 billion and also offered a board member position to Jan in Facebook. Jan Combe signed the Facebook takeover contract at an unused building in Silicon Valley where he and his mother once queued for food stand in the city of Mountain View where WhatsApp was located. The acquisition was completed later that year. Despite concerns about how the app would change under Facebook's ownership, WhatsApp continued to operate independently. Acton became a prominent figure in the tech industry due to the substantial acquisition deal. Under Combs' leadership, WhatsApp implemented end-to-end -end encryption in 2016, 
enhancing user privacy and security by ensuring that only the intended recipient could decrypt and read the messages. This move was a significant step toward enhancing user privacy by ensuring that only the intended recipients could access the content of the messages. WhatsApp introduced a business version of the app, called WhatsApp Business, aimed at small and medium-sized enterprises. It included features such as business profiles, automated responses, and the ability to connect with customers. Comb continued to lead WhatsApp as the CEO for several years. In April 2018, Comb announced his resignation from Facebook and WhatsApp. Reports suggested that his departure was due to concerns over Facebook's handling of user data and privacy issues. WhatsApp introduced a payments feature in some countries, allowing users to send and receive money directly through the app. However, its rollout faced regulatory challenges in certain regions. WhatsApp faced backlash in early 2021 when it updated its privacy policy, raising concerns about data sharing with Facebook. The update led to a brief surge in the popularity of alternative messaging apps. The update sparked discussions about user privacy and prompted some users to explore alternative messaging platforms. WhatsApp has continued to evolve, introducing new features and improvements to maintain its position as one of the most widely used messaging platforms globally. Jan Combs' story is often cited as an example of a successful immigrant entrepreneur who played a crucial role in creating a widely used and influential technology platform. Brian Acton's contributions to the creation and growth of WhatsApp, as well as his commitment to privacy issues, have made him a notable figure in the technology and philanthropy sectors. Jan Combs' story is often celebrated as an inspiring example of an immigrant entrepreneur who achieved tremendous success in the tech industry. that specializes in internet-related services and products. The initial goal of Google was to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. 
Google's search engine quickly gained popularity due to its innovative PageRank algorithm, which ranked web pages based on their relevance and importance. This algorithm helped users find more accurate and useful search results. The company's first office was a garage in Menlo Park, California. In 1990, a free service called Google Analytics, which produces website visitor statistics. Thanks to its innovations, the company is now one of the biggest brokers in the online advertising market. Google Search has branched out to offer other types of services in many different languages as well. These include Google Image Search, Google Video Search, Google Maps and Google Translate. Google has also released several internet productivity tools. Google has also worked on other projects. Notable ones include the open-source web browser Google Chrome, the mobile operating system Android and the social networking service Google+. Throughout the years of its existence, Google has not been without its detractors. One recurring issue has been privacy. These concerns range from the Gmail program's automatic email scanning to create targeted advertising, to the data and image collection of Google Street View. The Google search engine has been criticized for its censorship of search results, and even the company headquarters has been accused of unnecessary energy use. Google has also been acquiring businesses at an alarming rate, on average, at more than one company a week since 2010. In 2011, Larry Page resumed the role of CEO, and Schmidt became the executive chairman. In August 2015, Google underwent a major corporate restructuring and became a subsidiary of a new holding company, Alphabet Inc. Larry Page became the CEO of Alphabet, and Sundar Pichai became the CEO of Google. Alphabet Inc. was created to house various businesses, with Google remaining the largest and most significant subsidiary. In December 2019, Larry Page and Sergey Brin stepped back from day-to-day -day operations at Alphabet and Sundar Pichai took over as the CEO of both Google and Alphabet. In January 2022, Sundar Pichai was leading Google, while Larry Page and Sergey Brin had stepped back from day-to-day -day roles. Google's stock soared 1.290% in the first 10 years since its IPO. The company orchestrated a complex stock split, which has given more voting power to the founders. Some have defined the move as anti-investor, but the company is so profitable that this hasn't put many people off. At its last earnings, the second quarter for 2016, 
The company beat expectations and its listed stock rose to a new record high, taking its market capitalization to more than $500 billion, a far reach from the $23 BLN it listed at just 12 years ago. Google is sure to remain a dominant force in the global internet industry. Google's search engine quickly gained popularity due to its clean interface and superior search results. Larry Page has been known for his innovative thinking and contributions to the development of Google's search technology. His leadership played a crucial role in Google's growth into one of the world's most influential technology companies. Sergey Brin has been recognized for his contributions to technology and entrepreneurship, and he is known for his interest in various projects, including